This is one on one session with the Forum IS founder and director Ayush Sinha. In this session, students are asked questions to test their preparedness for the personality test. One on one sessions are not mock panel sessions. How is your preparation, sir? Uh, I'm doing the best I can. I'm uh, trying to work on my DASA as much as possible, sir. Wonderful. You have made a lot of progress from your records. I can see that. Okay, sir. From writing the first few tests, from your copies, at least three or four copies, I have been able to see of yours. But I uh, think sir. that's all that you have done. Sir, the mains copies. Yes, yes. Okay, sir. All right, Sankit. So, what did you have for breakfast today? Uh, sir, I had a uh, omelette. We had, had an omelette. So, what macronutrients are there in an omelette? Sir, uh, it contains carbohydrates, the which is the white part, and uh, sorry, sir, the proteins that is the white part, and the yellow part is for the fats. All right. And what micronutrients do we get from an egg? Um, sir, I just know that there is iron content in the egg. So. Any vitamins? Mm. Sir, I'm not aware of this. All right. Now, global hunger index and these Western studies, they are putting India not so much in a good light when it comes to fighting hunger. Yes, sir. They even rate Sri Lanka as better. Yes, sir. Now, because Sri Lanka is going through a crisis, a lot of people are feeling that what is explains this anomaly that these countries are showing India doing poorly on the hunger index, whereas countries such as Sri Lanka, which are actually having a food crisis, among other crises, sure. better off. Can you explain this anomaly? Uh, so definitely we are uh, not doing good as per the global hunger, hunger index recently uh, we are getting 107 rank out of almost 140 countries which is not a good score and i believe that the reason for this is that the methodology adopted by them does not look at the actual scenario fully uh, they do not take into the consideration the ground reality what is happening but on the other hand if we look at how india has performed in terms of food security uh, I believe that we have managed it well even during the pandemic and it's not only just that we are doing good but we are also helping the other nations like you have mentioned. No, that is fine. That is fine. So you are saying that these reports do not reflect ground reality. Yes, sir. Okay. So therefore, India should be doing better in the hunger index compared to let's say Sri Lanka. Sir, te technically if we consider the ground reality, yes, sir. Okay. Now, let me tell you that this whole debate that India is not so doing so poorly on hunger index, let us imagine for some time that we are actually not doing so well. Sure. Or let me just argue that this global hunger index is not really worried about food security among the well off. It is worried about a certain section. Sure, sir. Can you come up with any logical explanation as to why, who they are, who is missing out in our hunger map according to the global hunger index? Yes, sir. Sir, I believe the kind of people that are being missed out are those who are especially below the poverty line. And the reason is because it is difficult to track these people because they do not have any kind of uh, identification on them. And secondly, also the people who are migrating between states do not also get access to uh, food resources uh, such as we have seen in, during the pandemic. So I believe that these are the challenges that we have in addressing food security issues and these are the people that are not being counted okay you are from we have done btec from iit delhi yes sir. can you name some famous alumni from your college uh yes sir sir i would like to name one is uh, mr vinod khosla who is the owner of the founder of sun microsystems the first uh it based company in india and we also have uh, Mr. Sachin Bansal and Bini Bansal behind Flipkart and uh, I do not remember the names sir but there have been many startups such as Zomato and uh, Can you think of anyone from public policy perspective? Sir, uh, Mr. Raghuram Rajan is there sir. How could you miss him? Yes sir. Right. So, Elon Musk, a very popular figure, he tried to come up with several solutions of with respect to transportation. Yes, Among sir. them is urban rapid mass transport systems that he has conceived. Yes sir. What am I talking about? Uh, sir, I think you are referring to the Hyperloop technology. Uh, and it is a technology which uh, 
That's all. That's all. I'm referring to hyperloop technology. Can you explain to me how it works? Yes, sir. Sir, hyperloop technology is a very uh, efficient solution for. It's a basically a chair car, which is similar to a train, which runs using magnetic levitation technology. And basically, it means that the train or the chair the passenger car floats on the air, which minimizes the resistance and hence gains higher efficiency and speed. Uh, uh, during its operations. Are you sure that is hyperloop? Yes, sir. You are talking about magnetic levitation. Yes, sir. It uh, it it rests on the air uh, in the air because of the magnetic repulsion. Sir. But your friends from your college, your batchmates, they told me that it works by creation of a vacuum. Sir, it runs in the vacuum, sir. The whole uh, while it is in the air, the whole of the uh, train runs itself in the vacuum, sir. Okay, what are the, has it been uh, deployed yet anywhere? Uh, sir, it is not yet deployed anywhere, but the testing is definitely going on. It's in the prototyping stage. Sir. What do you think would be the possible challenges with it? Okay, sir. Um, sir, I believe first of all, uh, there are many technical challenges to address this problem. As you have mentioned, first of all, creating a vacuum in such a big space would consume a lot of energy. And secondly, to, dis to come up with strong magnets and have a continuous uh, electricity supply for that will also be challenging. And as of now, I can only see that being deployed in only highly developed countries and the technology might yet not yet in its current form be suitable for deployment in the developing countries like India. Sir. Sanket, so you also enjoy teaching? Yes, sir. What is the difference between teaching and coaching? Okay, sir. Uh, so teaching, uh, teaching is a broader term where one imparts knowledge uh, and training or any kind of advice to the recipient or the student. And coaching, on on other hand, is uh, slightly specific in nature. It forms a subset of teaching where one trains the particular student to get better at a particular subject matter. So, so I believe coaching is a subset of teaching. You would say coaching is a subset of teaching? Yes, sir. So in cricket, we have a coach. According to you, he should also be a teacher. Yes, sir. I think so, sir. Because he is also imparting uh, skills and knowledge with respect so what to What is the difference? Uh, sir, I think in coaching, the focus is on just a few set of uh, things that uh, the person is trying to like coach on or, or the train the person. But on teaching, it can be... It just it can't be limited to just one, few things. It can be, uh, it can be in terms of imparting knowledge or make giving training on other things or even sharing the experiences. No, that would not be correct. Teaching would require subject matter specialization. A teacher is generally confined to a subject or a group of subjects. Okay, sir. He is unable to contribute generally beyond it to the training of the candidate. A coach will not be a sub, may not be a subject matter specialist, but he would looks for the overall 360 degree progress of the candidate. Okay, sir. He may connect him to a teacher or a specialist when he desires that there is a need. Okay, Teaching has more formal relations with a student. Coaching may have little less formal and mentoring would have least formal relationship. Okay. So you have teaching as a hobby. So I will expect that you would have taught. Where have you been teaching? Sir, I've taught at uh, as part of the NSS scheme and at an NGO, uh, and I have taught in the uh, rural areas of Haryana. So. so, because you have taught in some schools and you are brilliant yourself, according to me, you have cracked one competitive examination and now you are coming to crack the civil service examination. Tell me, we often hear the dictum that by looking at a child, we can. We all have uncles who will say that by looking at the child, we can tell whether he will make it in life or not. Okay, we hear that, right? Yes, sir. You have grown up and you have done academically well for yourself. What traits in childhood can you... Are there certain traits in childhood which we can say that these traits, if they are there, then he will be successful later in life, in his career? Um, sir, I believe that to judge a child at such a young age, whether he or she will be doing good later in life, would be not a good judgment to make, sir. However, I would like to say that a couple of qualities such as curiosity and enthusiasm to learn are a couple of qualities which will definitely take the child to a long way. But at the same time, even child children who do not have such qualities uh, have improved and can improve and do great in life. Sir. And we have seen many scientists who are not bright as children have done great works in their lifetime. Sir. You have also organized national aero modeling. Yes, sir. Tell me about it. 
it's a uh, it's a national it's an aero modeling competition at the national level what is aero modeling sir aero modeling is an activity of prototyping aircrafts model aircrafts which include radio control aircrafts drones or ornithopters which are uh, which are uh, basically uh, a mechanical version of natural uh, insects or birds sir. so there are different kinds of aircrafts we make and the particular aero modeling competition that i worked on that i had organized was trying to test the aero modeling piloting skills of uh, the students who are taking this aero modeling activity in india throughout india sir what design features or what things are done so that an aircraft is not detected by radar okay sir uh, sir radar uh, which is stands for radio direction and ranging tries to pick up the signals from 360 degrees around however it has a blind spot that is a blind region that is below a certain altitude it cannot detect any aircraft so the short short way to not be detected no so it. that is flying the aircraft below the yes, radar sir. yes design element stealth have you heard of stealth aircrafts yes sir or stealth design yes sir tell me what are its components Uh, so stealth design basically tries to blend in with the environment uh, in ways such as its appearance firstly because its aerodynamics is designed in such a way that it does not cause a lot of drag and hence does not make a lot of noise and disturbance in the atmosphere which can be picked up by the uh, radar sensors so so that is one of the design features i can think of sir. it makes itself invisible to the radar system to the radar how does it do it sir it basically uh, it it is because of its aerodynamic design that it does not make a lot of noise and disturbance in the atmosphere no but if let us say a radar is sending radio signals yes sir it will how does it detect a aircraft uh, sir uh, when a radar sends radar sends a signal it tries to detect the signal that are bounced back from the very good. aircraft what can an aircraft do to hide from such signals or neutralize such signals uh sir i can imagine two ways of this sir firstly uh the speed of the uh, the speed of the aircraft can be higher than the uh the speed of the trap speed of the radio waves and secondly uh the, it can also use some kind of jammers or absorbers on the signal absorbers on the aircraft itself so that the no signal so when you have done that. aero modeling i am expecting that you should be aware of this okay sir. yes you are right this, that it may send signals it may detect the signal and immediately create signals that nullify it yes sir or completely absorb it so that no signal bounces off the body of the aircraft and therefore it can become invisible to the radar a radio based radar system that is what it is okay thank you sir you also watch anime yes sir i do sir What is the difference between anime and normal animation? Sir, uh, technically speaking, uh, I mean qualitatively speaking, anime is just a word for Japanese animations. However, there are many difference quality wise. Uh, one is definitely the storyline and the audio visual graphic quality is very good. And I have it is better than uh, the animations that we see from Walt Disney. Uh, yes, in terms of expression of characters, I would say that they are more expressive in nature, but. Walt Disney character also have a good uh, animation style yes, sir but in, in terms of emotions and uh, the story i would say anime are more appealing to the wider range of sections of the society starting from a child even to a young uh, i mean older people sir but walt disney animations are more appealing to the children itself sir No, Walt Disney animations also have very good expressions. Maybe the storyline. Do anime have storyline that appeals to children, or do are they generally thrillers? Sir, there are uh, all sorts of genres in the anime, anime, sir, which range from appealing to the children, like we see in our uh, television, also like Shin Chan. How did you pick that up? Uh, sir, I started watching it as a teenager. uh to cope up with my anxiety sir because i was preparing for iit je examination and this was one way i could just uh, let go of my uh, nervous nervousness during those times sir which is your favorite animation anime movie uh, or sir. character what is your favorite anime character sir i would say that it is uh, naruto tell me three qualities that you have learned from him sir naruto is a character who had who is an orphan who has been abandoned by his Uh, by everybody in the society so he grows up 
all by himself so that taught me uh, empathy that taught me patience and that taught me perseverance that one needs to have to grow up in life sir all right you from mechanical engineering iit delhi how will you use your mechanical engineering knowledge in administration okay sir sir uh, the administration is a very generalist job sir and uh, having said that i believe that there are very few places i can use my knowledge of mechanical engineering uh, such as today as we see uh, we are shifting to uh, green and clean energy and we are vouching for more uh, electric vehicles on that and increasing efficiency in thermal power plants and uh, things like that so i believe that i will be motivated to work in these technologies more however i believe that i will know more uh, depending on the situation on the ground sir all right why civil services okay sir sir uh, coming from a tribal uh, background and one of the most multi dimensional poverty district in telangana i have had the opportunity to study from a very premier institute and also work overseas in japan for a year all this time i've had the opportunity to grow sir and i would like to help other citizens especially the uh, underprivileged ones to have all the opportunities to grow up and fully develop their potential and my parents both being government servants have inspired me to be in the government and uh, be in the public service as well and finally i also like the challenge and diversity that the job offers sir so these are the reasons why i would like to be a civil servant sir all right thank you sanket your interview is over thank you sir